Good morning, everybody, uh, and welcome. My name is Dominic M. Calabro, and I'm honored to be the President and Chief Executive Officer of Florida Tax Watch, the eyes and ears of Florida taxpayers for over 40 years. And welcome, uh, and thank you for joining this morning's Florida Tax Watch virtual press conference. Today, we will be unveiling two important reports developed under the oversight of Florida Tax Watch Senior Vice President, Bob Nave. The first is bringing the Sunshine State back, the impact of COVID-19 across Florida's economy and options for recovery. This takes a look at COVID's impact on each of the major segments of Florida's economy. The second report, the best defense is a good offense. Uh, the economic impact of protecting responsible, responsible Floridians from COVID related civil liability. This one we partnered with Dr. Clyde Deo, founder of the Regional Economic Consulting Group, which does a great, great job for us and all the taxpayers of Florida. It makes the economic case for appropriate safeguards for our economy, basically looking at the cost of doing it and the cost of not doing so. We believe these findings and recommendations provide the foundation for moving the state toward economic recovery and a responsible liability shield. Before we dive into these reports, I'd also like to introduce, and most importantly introduce our chairman, uh, U.S. Senator George Lemieux, uh, and also chairman of Gunster, to say a few words. Chairman Lemieux. Thank you, Dominic. Uh, I'm proud to serve as the chair of this independent, nonpartisan, nonprofit government watchdog and taxpayer research institute, who for more than 40 years has served as the trusted eyes and ears of Florida's taxpayers. There's no doubt coming out of this pandemic that Florida has much to do to bring our state back. But I am confident that our elected leaders with the guidance of groups like Tax Watch will be able to do so. Tax Watch is committed to tackling the tough issues and pro by providing research and recommendations. And that's really what makes Tax Watch different. There's a lot of great organizations in Florida, but Tax Watch backs it up in a nonpartisan way with research. That's the incredible work that Tax Watch does. I want to thank the entire Tax Watch staff, including Vice President Bob Nave and President Dominic Calabro for this research effort. I want to thank Belinda Kaiser for her work in spearheading this research effort on behalf of our board of directors. And now I'd like to welcome my friend and the great chief financial officer of the state of Florida, Jimmy Patronis, who's been a great partner to Tax Watch. Jimmy? Thanks so much, Chairman. Appreciate what, you, what you've done with your leadership in the state in so many different levels. Dominic, you're, uh, you're just uh, a stalwart when it comes to the financial accountability of our state, the folks that you have mentored over the years that have rose through the ranks at your staffing levels at Tax Watch are now all over doing successful things. So appreciate your leadership and what you do to contribute to the proliferation of good fiscal responsibility and good fiscal policy. Um, look, there's, there's no two ways about it. COVID-19 has dramatically changed the, uh, the outlook of the state of Florida. Uh, the, the sky was the limit back in January. Over the last 12 months, we have seen such dramatic changes and over the, especially over the last 10 months, how much more extraordinarily challenging it has been at so many different levels. But as we are uh, looking at uh, the road ahead, and I appreciate the leadership that Tax Watch has shown about this, uh, business liability is something that I've been very sensitive to. I grew up, you know, 30 years of my life was working in a family restaurant. Uh, no smaller business is smaller than a family owned operated restaurant. But as we hear the challenges, as my phone has been ringing, uh, as those families have been affected, dry cleaners, you name it, the small businesses that are the backbone, the biggest job creator of the state, the concerns are, you know, how COVID is going to affect them and the liability of their businesses. We've been traveling all over the state and, and not with a focus on restaurants, but just because restaurants are typically, uh, again, the small business, whether it be Gainesville or Jacksonville or West Palm or Orlando or Tampa or, or Pensacola, taking our message on the road, meeting with small business owners, partnering with legislators. And it's been great to get the legislative input and, and buy in early on as we see this, uh, where we have seen signals from both the House and the Senate that this is gonna be a priority. COVID liability is not to, 
to be a, a invincible shield. If you're a good actor and you're doing things right by your employees and you're following the policies that have been set forth by the legislature, you should have some peace of mind that you're not going to be open to some type of a, a sue and settle environment of litigation. So as, as people are embracing CDC guidelines or Department of Health guidelines, uh, you know, we want to give them some peace of mind and doing nothing is not an option. But as businesses are struggling uh, and, and as they're being polled, the biggest concern they've got is dealing with COVID. You know, will I even reopen again? And we have seen it uh, pretty recently, at least in, in, in what I've been hearing and, and seeing as boots on the ground, especially those family owned businesses that may not have a succession plan or they have burned through the reserves. Uh, they'll, they'll simply make the business decision and pull the plug and, and not reopen. So this is time for the Florida legislature to act. And, and our citizens, they're looking for leadership from local government, from state government, from federal government. And, and this is exactly what our call to action is and why we're so excited about partnering with Tax Watch. Uh, but again, I think the three things I've been keeping pretty simple is take care of our employees, take care of our people, keep the policies simple to follow, and put people over attorney's profits. I think if we keep that as kind of a guiding template and, you know, and, and have that, at least that level of expectation to the legislature, uh, we'll, we'll be able to accomplish good, uh, but we cannot do it alone. We have got to hold, hold our, our, our legislators accountable and me is uh, also part of that included party. But uh, as Rep McClure will have the bill uh, in the House that we're going to be closely monitoring. Uh, Senator Brandis will have it in the Senate as we're closely monitoring. We look forward to keeping you and your team abreast as that bill travels through the process. And I think it's going to travel at a pretty rapid pace considering the urgency and how important this is to the business and consumer confidence and employee confidence uh, of our state. But as uh, we're moving forward, I look forward to helping create with the partnership with y'all uh, a, a bigger, better, stronger Florida. Uh, our, our work is is uh, set forth. We've got uh, we've got some some lifting to do. But again, with your partnership working together, uh, the sky's the limit to succeed. Is is I'm really optimistic when I consider looking at what other states are going through right now. Uh, Governor Sanders has done a great job at, at focusing everything he can to, to focus on the environment and also protect the Florida economy. Uh, Dominic, I'm fine for any questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you, CFO Patronus. And thank you, Jimmy, for your continued great, great leadership and friendship with Florida Taxes on behalf of the taxpayers of Florida. Um, throughout the pandemic, Florida Tax Watch has taken the lead in working with partners across the state and keeping a focus on the critical economic recovery that must accompany the health-based recovery uh, we are working so hard to achieve. Obviously, the most important thing is to have the vaccine and, and kill the virus. That's simply the single most important thing. But right up there next to that is to make sure we have the protections where we protect good actors and uh, discourage bad actors from acting. In fact, even penalize those who do act poorly. Uh, tax Watch's work last summer included the creation of a Tax Watch COVID-19 Taxpayer Task Force. Um, and it really offered ways that we could, the taxpayers can save with tax administration. And I want to rec recognize uh, uh, Senior VP Kurt Winter for his leadership on that, as well as uh, Jeff Binkley that helped us from Ryan Company that was very, very important. You could look at that on our website, www.floridataxwatch.org. But also, uh, these help uh, contribute to the reset effort. And I want to give a personal shout out to Associate Industries of Florida for bringing together uh, so many businesses, NFIB, um, realtors, um, um, hospitality sector, tax watch, among others, about 50 statewide businesses in all. Uh, Speaker Tom Feeney, thank you for your leadership on that. One of the things, one of the most important things that came up with was this issue of uh, COVID liability limited uh, shield. So I think it's very important and we're happy to bring a unique perspective to that. And that is what's the fiscal and economic consequences of acting on it and the economic and fiscal consequences of not passing one. So um, we spent the second half of last year examining the impact and major economic sectors evaluating the paths. So part of that was uh, releasing this report, bringing the Sunshine back, Sunshine State back. The impact of COVID-19 across Florida's economy and options for recovery. This is a deep dive into 11 major sectors of Florida's economy and provides recommendations specific to each of those sectors. 
When we realize that Florida's economy has often been described as a three-legged stool, relying on tourism, agriculture, as well as real estate and construction. But nowadays, these industries are still very important to our state, but one key item you will take away from the report is the evidence that our more than two decade focus on diversification and economic growth has really, really paid off. So Florida's diversified its economy far more and agriculture is not quite the same um, contributor, but is enormous and very, very important no matter what. And to weather the storm, we have to recognize that as well. But again, more than anything, the most important thing that we can do is um, ensure that our policy leaders heed the advice for policy, regulatory, and fiscal prudence as one of the reasons that Florida remains open for business. And companies are moving here even in the midst of a pandemic. So when you read this report, you'll see the impact the pandemic has had on our economy last year. And you also find recommendations for each key industry if we plan to ensure a strong recovery. As you read this report, you also know there's one clear recommendation that cuts across all others, and that is the need for a responsible liability shield for responsible companies, nonprofits, government agencies, churches, schools, synagogues, uh, healthcare providers, and everything from costly, unnecessary litigation. Well, simply the most important thing is minimizing the virus or killing it ultimately with the vaccine. The next most important thing is protecting the health and economic well-being of all Floridians through this kind of appropriate shield, which gives customers and employees the added confidence that when an employer, uh, nonprofit or for-profit follows the guidelines, they're gonna be covered. So it gives them more incentive to, to do that. Given the intricacies of widespread liability shield, we're also today releasing a standalone report uh, that's the best defense is a good offense. The economic impact of protecting responsible Floridians from COVID-related civil liability. We've been here before. Tax Watch has looked at, uh, in 2006, what it takes to, to enact joint and several liability, and it was really through the, the groundbreaking research and testimony in the Senate Judiciary Committee that broke the tie, broke the, the, the log jam, and got that important piece of legislation passed. Likewise, we see the same potential for runaway litigation, very costly, uh, frivolous suits, which would have a devastating impact on Florida across the board, but especially our businesses as they try to recover from global economic crisis. Safeguards today are essential to ensure that all industries across Florida remain open and failure to act can have dire consequences. Very simply, here's the, here the compelling facts of the economic study. If employers' confidence in the economy is shaken due to the absence of a shield, we would reduce the Florida economy by as much as $28 billion of gross state product and personal income and more than 356,000 jobs, more than 356,000 jobs on an annual basis. Now, who wants that? Nobody, either political party, no one does. The Florida legislature should establish safeguards to protect businesses and nonprofits and government agencies and their agents and individuals from uh, liability against specific types of COVID related claims so businesses can reopen uh, and uh, remain open. But make no mistake, make no mistake, it's also critical that these safeguards ensure that those who get COVID-19 because of gross negligence or intent to harm can fully recover and those bad actors are prosecuted. We need to make sure good actors are protected and bad actors are punished. Let me repeat that. We need to make sure that good actors are protected and bad actors are punished. I'm encouraged that we enter the final, the first week of legislative committee meetings one of the first bills in each chamber is this COVID limited liability shield. We've spoken to the sponsors, they've made their comments with regard to tax watches work in this regard as you heard from the CFO. So we're very pleased about that. Let's also remember that uh, the health crisis, just to walk into a frivolous lawsuit is so costly and pays the price. So before I go much further, I, I also want to thank one of our very important business leaders in our state and a pronounced national leader in education, particularly secondary education, uh, tax with member of the board and executive committee and vice chancellor of Kaiser University, um, Linda Kaiser. Ms. Kaiser, could you come join me? Well, thank you very much, Dominic. And let me 
first say thank you, Dominic, for leading Tax Watch for over 40 years to the team of Tax Watch and this critical conversation we're, we're having about COVID-19. Over the years, you've been very, very laser-like focused on protecting the taxpayers of this state. And for that, we owe you a, a big, big debt of credit. Let me also say, ladies and gentlemen, that as a educator for many years in the state of Florida, with about 21 different locations, working along with other independent colleges and universities known as ICUF, we are focused on talent development. And I know that you know that talent development really drives job development, and job development is great for our Florida economy. So as we move forward with this COVID limited liability shield, we know that responsible businesses need reasonable protection, protection from frivolous lawsuits. And this legislation looks to provide guidelines, looks to provide thoughtful uh, protections, making sure, as Dominic has said, that strong actors, good actors are protected, not the bad actors. So ladies and gentlemen, let me say that as we work together with all other partners, other public educators, other companies of all sizes, our healthcare providers, this is a very important in initiative, a very important initiative that I hope that we will all embrace. It is being passed or looked at at other states and Florida has always been a national leader in our economy in making sure that we continue to be the state that every many other states, other people want to live, work, and play and make their homes in. So again, I wanna say thank you to CFO Patronus, our chair, George and you, and of course, the Tax Watch team. Thank you. Thank you, Belinda. And really to round out this final uh, speaker, I'd like to add is uh, uh, my own friend and a member of the Tax Watch Board of Trustees for many, many years now, but also someone that is a, an ardent supporter of the small businesses of Florida, which are absolutely the backbone, the fundamental backbone. I think some 70, 80% of all businesses, they are the backbone of Florida, and they're the ones that could really, really need a, a good shot in the arm. Bill Hurley, Executive Director of the Florida uh, National Federation of Independent Businesses, Florida. Bill? Thanks, Dom, and uh, thanks, Belinda, for your leadership. Bill Hurley with the National Federation of Independent Business. I'm the executive director of the NFIB in Florida. And I wanna thank Dominic uh, for bringing this research forward and demonstrating the vitalness of this reform and the urgency of this reform. I represent small independent business owners and over a quarter of small business owners are indicating to us that they may not be in business another six months from now if some conditions don't improve. Since the very outset of this pandemic, small business owners have been making COVID-driven management decisions every day. Every day, they're making dozens of decisions based on their good faith effort to follow government-issued public health standards. In doing so, they're keeping our economy alive. In doing so, they need to know that the state has their back. To this moment, it doesn't. And that's why it is so urgent that these liability protections are passed at the earliest opportunity uh, by the legislature. I do wanna commend legislative leaders for bringing a strong bill forward. And we look forward to working with them, demonstrating to them uh, that uh, this bill is, is something necessary for our economy and needs to be passed at the earliest opportunity. We've seen uh, over 500 uh, liability cases so far, so far, I assure you that that is just the tip of the iceberg. And small business owners have great apprehension going into 2021 uh, that they all these continued acts that they're taking every day to keep their businesses open uh, are leaving them more and more vulnerable to lawsuits. So I wanna thank Tax Watch and Dominic and the whole Tax Watch team for assembling this uh, very impactful report. We're gonna make sure that all the legislators read it and take, a, uh, take appropriate action in passing this good uh, COVID liability reform. So thanks, Tax Watch. And I also wanna thank CFO Patronus for his strong leadership uh, throughout the summer, uh, really one of the earliest voices in raising this concern uh, that the economy faces. We're counting on legislative leaders to get this job done at the earliest opportunity. Thanks so much, Dominic. Thank you, Bill. 
Uh, thank, thank you all very, very much. Uh, if there are some questions, we'll try to answer them now, or if uh, for convenience, we can answer them offline, whatever is your preference. Chris? In the absence of any, we'll take your... Hang on, let's... Oh. Let's give uh, folks on the line the ability to unmute if they do have any questions. I know we had one come in for CFO Patronus uh, from John Kennedy. Uh, CFO, are you still with us? Okay. Okay. Hello, uh, John, you there? Oh, there you are. Uh, CFO, it's uh, the question is, have you made any attempt to examine why one quarter of COVID related lawsuits filed are businesses suing their insurers? Are they are insurers failing to pay rightful claims? And isn't this an area where you could play some advocacy role? Or do you conclude that these are businesses who failed to understand that many business interruption policies specifically excluded pandemics as a reason for a claim? Well, we, we led early on on that issue back in March. Um, most of y'all remember, we, we took the governor's um, uh, order that he established and we made sure that we pushed out that all risk management under the state of Florida was covering first responders when it came to COVID uh, related liabilities. Um, that ultimately ended up creating a trigger effect um, with the League of Cities, with their insurance policies. We saw other carriers around the state um, uh, workers' comp carriers embrace it. Um, you know, as, as, as best as we could, we tried to push out, uh, you know, an expectation that we needed this done where we had direct jurisdiction. We made it happen, um, and we definitely applauded those that had the phone calls that, that have ensued afterwards have actually been pretty light. The, if you go pull the data, workers' comp claims during the period under the COVID-19, uh, you know, pandemic right now, are less workers top claims in general are less than they were this same period of time compared to last year, the previous years. Uh, so anyway, I, I, I mean, some of that's just going to be because teleworking has put people at home. So anyway, I think, I think we've, we've tried to do the best we can to address it with the tools that we've got in order to ensure uh, workforce in Florida is protected. Thank you, CFO. Uh, for Dominic from Mike Sinan, what type of spending measures should the legislature do or not do, raid reserves, cut in specific areas, et cetera? Well, that's a very good question. I think actually two things. There are many opportunities in a $92, $93 billion state budget to reduce expenses, to keep them under control. I think that is mainly the concern of uh, our Senate President, uh, Senator Wilton Simpson, as well as uh, appropriations chairs in the House and Senate. Tax watch is offered um, uh, over 20 some specific ways to, to uh, part uh, with unnecessary spending without adversely affecting core functions and, and constituents. So there are opportunities, tremendous opportunities to save money in the billion dollar, multi-billion dollar budget. So I'd say that's the first thing. The second is we're really blessed that we have a AAA bond rating in so, in some important measure because we keep a focus nonetheless on keeping spending under control. No matter how prosperous the economy is, it's of no value if spending is out of control. And so it's, it's very important to spend wisely where it has the greatest impact and cut costs where it doesn't. So those opportunities do exist. We can show chapter and verse where and how to do it. And we'll work with the legislature and the governor's office to achieve that. Good question, thanks. Uh, we've got uh, from Mary, <coughs> excuse me, Mary Ellen Clasp. Uh, question for the CFO or Dominic, could you provide us any data with the number of COVID related liability lawsuits that is actually in our report, Dominic, if you've got that in front of you. Uh, trial lawyers say the bar is so high to accuse a business of COVID exposure, there are new cases that will emerge. What hard evidence do you have that this is a problem in search of a solution? In the back of the liability shield paper uh, is the actual list and that's as of, I think, the beginning of December. Thank you, Mary Ellen. I think the answer is 490 something. Uh, Lawsuits. Okay. As of December, yeah. So there probably are more, but uh, again, one of the things we discovered uh, when Tax Watch worked with the uh, House of Senate leadership in 2006 on joint several liability, it wasn't so much the, uh, the adjudication in, in, in court, it was all the costs that it took to 
remedy it, to, to uh, address it. So joint several liability was often used as a weapon. It was weaponizing the, uh, the legal system to kind of really force people's hands, even when they really didn't have substantial liability. And so what Tax Watch did, working with the House and Senate leadership, uh, showed here's the impact over the last five years from 20 circuits, we had the compelling evidence information, and that broke the log jam. Similarly, I think we look at evidence to, to make sure, and again, if, if we go too far, we'll, make, we'll have to pivot. But the key is, let's not uh, be inadequate in our response. Florida's the third largest state, not only is it the Sunshine State, but a megatrend state. Let's set the example of doing this right. Uh, from Jossie, uh, the current COVID-19 business liability legislation requires doctors to sign an affidavit attesting to where the patient got COVID. This may not be something doctors will want to get involved in. How willing do you think doctors will be to sign something based on uh, patient testimony? Couldn't this be a hindrance to filing these lawsuits? Yeah, you know, I don't really, uh, can't fully answer that question. Um, it's not really my field of inquiry and expertise, but I would say this, that they could just give the best approximation, uh, the best available knowledge they have at that time, and that's going to have to be the best solution at that time. Um, I guess it's also valuable so that we could trace where someone may have contracted the disease so you can get at the point, get at the source, and uh, eradicate it at the source. Listen, we want to thank you all very much. This is really important. This is evolving. It's growing. And tax which will be there every step of the way. If there's anything else that we can do to provide fiscal facts of how we spend tax, we're happy to do it. State and local government. I think, um, you know, we're really looking forward to uh, coming out of this. Lord knows we all want that to happen. But we're working very diligently in a constructive manner to do it, to build, uh, to build our democracy here throughout the state of Florida. Thank you all very much. Appreciate you.